Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to our sunset safari live in South Africa. We're out in the bush hoping to find all sorts of different animals today and we've started our afternoon with a herd of impalas in true South African style. My name is Tess, behind the camera is Panda. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm really excited because it is my last afternoon drive and I get to have it with Panda and with the lovely Jordan in my ear this afternoon. So I'd love to hear from you for my last sunset safari. But we might as well look at the impalas because they're looking at something and we don't know what. They've heard something, they've seen something and they keep staring. So this is a good sign. It means we might have a surprise appearance of something fantastic. <laughs> and actually we're trying to look for the impala we had this morning. She was covered in wounds we think inflicted by wild dogs early this morning. Oh, the male is chasing them. That's what's going on. There's a male chasing them. He's feeling cheeky. But anyway, welcome to Juma Private Game Reserve. If you haven't been here before, I hope that you're going to love it. I know we do. He is definitely showing off for you already this afternoon, but we're in the Sabi Sands, one of the best areas for game viewing in South Africa. So thanks for being on the back of the safari vehicle today. I'd love to hear from you. Is there anything specific you want me to look for? Do you have any questions for me before I go or questions for any of us? We're live, we're interactive. You can even let us know if there's a specific topic you want us to chat about. You can register on the website and ask us questions that way. Or you can also join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Wild Earth and you can join the chat on YouTube. And don't forget, you can also watch us on the app. Very exciting. I love those two on top of the termite mound. They've decided they're escaping the male by being on higher ground. I don't think it's going to work for very long. They're both young males, <laughs> which I think is quite telling. <laughs> Jackal, nose check, water check, camera check ready to go i love it okay so i've got my binos i've got my water i don't have my camera because i'm all about being in the moment today and singing to keep panda and i both going so that we don't burst into a puddle of tears <laughs> but we're going to try our best i promise you <laughs> but we are ready to go this afternoon my plan if we can't find this female impala that's got the wounds we are going to spend a little bit of time with the herd trying to find her but if we can't find her we're going to head down towards the hyena dens cedric found yet another one this morning with a different female hyena that we hadn't even thought of having cubs yet. My goodness, this is getting very rough very quickly. So we want to try and find some hyena cubs. Can't think of a more perfect way to say goodbye to Juma. <laughs> okay, we're going to stick around and watch this all unfold. It's a bit of a circus at the moment. And we're going to send you over to have a look at what the weather is doing today. It seems to be nice and cool. Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to Amakala where the sun is trying to break through the cloud but there is rain predicted and some rain clouds on the horizon so we're going to be keeping it nice and close not getting too far away to be caught in what could be a torrential downpour. Hello my name is Steve I'm joined by Morgan on camera and we're about out and about in Amakala this afternoon everybody. Amakala Private Game Reserve and we're very excited to show you some giraffe. Giraffe feeding, the male on the right there. There was another female on the left and there was even a giraffe lying down which we don't get to see that often although in Madikwe I seem to find giraffe lying down almost every single day which is quite a rare occurrence for me not that they don't lie down just that it's not something that you get to see that often there we go there we go young boy now when I say lying down that is a giraffe lying down legs tucked up 
but head straight up in the air. Good afternoon, Luca. Welcome on board this relaxing Sunday afternoon bumble. Hopefully we can find you all sorts of wonderful things. We're going to make a turn past the Ard Volfiki den. See if maybe they're around. We haven't checked in a couple of days. We were very lucky the start of the week and lucky a second time, but we haven't had much success since. We're spending most of our time in the southern main part of the reserve since then. We thought, let's give it a bash. It was a day very much like this that we saw all of those aardvolves. Anna Jordan directing would be thrilled if we managed to show her and all of you aardvolves this afternoon. If you don't know what they are, everybody, stick around, hold your thumbs, cross your fingers. Wonderfully long neck and face, enabling it to feed almost on the other side of the bush, where all the other antelope can't access. And since the rains have fallen, a lot of the trees we're coming across, you can see that there's that very shimmery green to them. Lots of new growth, lots of new leaves have come out. So it's a time of plenty for herbivore animals. Dogman lover, yeah, they got no pressure this side. Although the lions are able to cross onto this part of the reserve, there aren't any on this side. So these giraffes are pretty relaxed. She's busy ruminating, I think it's a she. Staring off into the distance, chomping up the leaf material for easier digestion. Well, Cedric's out and about as well, and he's looking forward to saying good afternoon. Oh, what a way to start uh, the sunset safari with uh, a hyena. Spotted a hyena that is uh, resting yeah, in the, the little pool exactly where we left uh, in Tima and uh, Gangarika this morning. So I think it's Gangarika, but we shall see now. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me on Wendy, we've got Muscles and Paul. So thanks for joining. All right, so what's going to happen? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to look at this hyena, but uh, ah, full of laughs this afternoon, I don't know why. There we go, laughing like a hyena. Yeah. Now, of course, this spotted hyena has just decided to rest here, and maybe keeping cool. It looks like Gangarika, am I right? Please let me know. Or is it in Tima? No, I might be wrong here. Just don't look on the scar on the side there. I think it might be Gangarika. <laughs> it was cooling down. It wasn't really a warm day, so I don't know why this uh, spotted hyena decided to go and rest here in the water. But it was here since this morning. And Tima, I once said to him, yeah. mm, Thanks, Raz. So we actually, when we left from Tima this morning, remember, she was exactly the same spot. Gangarika was on the outskirts of the, of the water. Um, but I wonder if uh, that other female hyena didn't go back to the den on taxons. I know that Tess is going to go and follow up on on those ones. Um, but yeah, we are going to sit with Antima here. She must have been blooming here the whole whole day. Typical a Sunday afternoon relaxation time. And this female, of course, got a young cub.
Alaska Safari fan, yes. I must say, we all, I think we're all excited for a whole new um, generation of uh, Juma clan members coming through. So, you can imagine Ribbon, June, this one in Tima, Gangarika. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I think exciting times coming, uh, coming ahead for the Juma clan, and especially for us here on Wild Earth. You start seeing new ones running around. So, yep. Always, always nice. It's time to tap into your owl like wisdom and elephant like memory. Gear up for a month of Animal Quiz Mania this November. Teams will pit against each other every Saturday for some good old-fashioned interactive fun on The Sunset Show. To enter, form a team of at least two people, fill out the form on our website and name your team. Come along and put yourself and your challenges to the test. Wild Earth, bringing the fun to the safari. And that's no coincidence that I'm starting off this shift right here at Eco Training with elephants. And as we all know, right here on Pridelands, it's an elephant mecca. There's always, always elephants around. I am back from two weeks away on leave. My name is Chris Erasmus, everybody. And with me on CamOps is Cameron. So Cameron the CamOp is behind the scenes there. Anyway, elephants right here at Leopard Dam. And while we pan back towards the elephants, our plan this afternoon, very basic, as you all know, usually take my first afternoons rather easy, scout around for some elephants. And um, I'm really hoping this time around, I'll have a bit more luck with cats as opposed to my previous work shift. And we seem to have some reports of leopard around in the last couple of days. And in fact, there was a leopard seen earlier this morning. And we are going to work that area a little bit and see if there's not perhaps any sign of that individual. I'm not sure who it was. But look at that. A little bit of play between these two young elephants. Right, 
I've got a comment there. Good to have me back. Unfortunately, didn't copy the name. I'll get it right now. I'd like to acknowledge that. And it is great to be back. It is great to be back. I'm only here for a short one this time around. Hey, Moodley. Moodley. And I'm only here for about, I think about eight days. And um, we're gonna hopefully have a lot of fun in these coming eight days. And let me know, let me know if there's anything that you'd like us to to try and find for you here at Eco Training. I believe Ezel Winnie has been around again in my absence, which is great. Spoke to BK and um, Liam the other day as well. It seemed like they also had some great moments with the big guy, and I'm hoping that he'll reappear somewhere. And then leopard. That's my aim for this next eight days is leopards. I'm going to try and find every leopard in this place. It's amazing how two weeks can also change an environment. I was just amazed that, you know, in, in some ways it's drier, but there's also a little bit more green in some of these trees. You'll see that little knobthorn branch hanging in front of that elephant there. So the knobthorns are all greening up as well. I have seen the red bush willows also pushing out leaves. All sorts of trees are now pushing out green leaves. <laughs> Cheetahs and other animals. Yep, they indeed said hello. And um, no, I had a I had a lovely two weeks. Uh, I was back down in the Cape where I do reside now, in the beautiful town of Hans Bay, Klein Bay to be more exact. And we did spend some time with my in-laws. We had some friends over, family friends from Scotland, which we entertained as well, which was quite nice. And um, then we just had some fun with the boys. I even saw a whale. Well, actually a few. Southern right whales. And that area is very well known. It's even called the Whale Coast. Very well known for viewing these whales as they come very close to the shore at this time of the year. And I was delighted to see something else that's also massive and iconic. Didn't see any new birds though. Didn't see any new birds. Well, can't get them all, all the time, can you? All right, so that report of that leopard is basically behind us along Marula Lane, which is a road that runs just uh, east-west and it's just south of us. And we went to this particular spot where the report, or, or the location where this leopard was seen. There's nothing there at the moment. So we're going to take the road just north of this drainage line where it was seen, slowly drive, check for tracks. And that's kind of like what I'm hoping would yield the result. And then we'll just generally drive and work that area. Don't you think that's a good plan? Shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. The report was that it was rather calm with the car as well, so I'm hoping it's the pixie pan female. All right, let's go and take a look, investigate what the leopard report was about. While we do that, let's head over to Juma with Tessa. <laughs> Chris, what whale did you see here? <laughs> Also, welcome back. <laughs> I'd love to know what whale you saw. I haven't seen a whale in ages. I haven't spent enough time at the sea recently. It's nice to hear Chris's voice again, don't you think? Good luck with all the leopards. All right, we're going to the den. Everybody cross your fingers, cross your toes. Braid your hair. Oh, a southern right whale. That's really cool. Well done, Chris. 
That is awesome. Wow. We've been seeing a lot of seals and penguins on the coast in Port Alfred, apparently. I say we in the very general sense. It didn't include me. I've been up here. <laughs> but my parents have been seeing a lot of seals, a lot of penguins. I haven't seen any in a while, just like the whales. Oh, and quite a few dolphins. But remember, there were those really rough seas with all the rain and the storms down on the coast. Makes sense. Okay, hyena den. Crossing fingers, crossing toes, braided my hair. All the lucky things, I got my lucky socks on. They're pink with elephants on them. If you haven't seen them, they're amazing. <laughs> Come on, hyenas. I will be so happy if I can spend the whole afternoon with the Juma clan. The Juma clan, Panda and I, it's like the perfect combination. We've had all the hyena drama together, Panda. I don't know what it is with you and I and hyena drama. <laughs> There's something hyena between us. <laughs> There's something spotty between us. That probably makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We're gonna try. So we're going to the den off of Taxon's Road first, those of you that know it. The original den, the OG. Oh, Darcy Miller, how did I know you were going to ask that? The vulture's nest. Yes, ma'am. I can definitely go and check that. I actually went past there briefly this morning, but for the first time, the adult was sitting out on the side. We couldn't see the chick. I think it was flat down at the bottom. And then we got distracted because we found the wild dog tracks. <laughs> so I'll go back there this afternoon. It would be great to see them. And the African Harrier Hawk nest is just up the road from there, maybe 150 meters. I'd like to see them as well. See if they're sitting on the nest yet. I feel like every time I drive in here, I have this horribly nervous feeling, but in a good way. Right, Panda, which entrance were they at? This one or that one? This one. Oh, you see, I checked that entrance yesterday, not this one. That makes sense. I didn't notice anything here, but you never know. It's very tight corners. You're doing a good job, Rusty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nina Brown, what a question. The first member of the Juma clan that I ever met. I have a feeling it might have been Swazi, who's a pretty big female that we thought was a male and then she popped out a cub. It was very surprising. Hence, we named the cub Masangita, which means surprise um <laughs> i think it was either swazi or ribbon because when i first got to juma which was over two years ago now um ribbon had cubs she had cubs at that den off of twin dams road which is in the kind of southeastern part of juma so it was either ribbon with her cubs that was the first ever hyena den like that that i'd ever seen but I think, I have a feeling the first ever hyena I met was Swazi because Swazi comes into camp a lot and I think I saw the first hyena in camp. Maybe that's why I've always liked Swazi. Swazi's huge. Okay, there's no one home. This is really sad. But I'll see if I can come back and check again a little later. So you all know the policy sensitivity i prefer not to stay here if there are no adults at the den because we don't know how many cubs are in the den and we don't want them to feel uncomfortable with the smell and sound of people we can't smell very good to them imagine how we smell to animals all of their sen their senses are so accentuated so you can imagine they can smell all the chemicals in our shampoos and our face creams and everything and must be awful mixed with uh, the smell of rusty and his oil
sensing the beauty and wonder of the African bush, but don't have months available for an extensive learning program? Look no further than Eco Training's 7 or 14 day EcoQuest course. Designed for those who yearn for a taste of the wild, this immersive program will give you an in-depth understanding of the African bush in as little as seven days. You'll be guided by expert trainers who will lead you through the various ecosystems of Africa and teach you essential bush skills. Over the course of the program, you'll learn about animal behavior, tracking and identification, as well as the intricacies of conservation and African cultures. With the guidance of your trainers, you'll have the opportunity to witness wild animals up close and personal in their natural habitats. You'll also have the opportunity to make new friends and create lasting connections with people from all over the world who share your passion for the wild. This course is the perfect way to gain a deep understanding of the African bush, even if you have limited time. Join Eco Training's 7 or 14 day EcoQuest course Further your journey as a true bush enthusiast today. <laughs> it's just turned into the perfect day. Oh my goodness, there's a little blacksmith lapwing chick that's, in, um, I can't speak, panda. Hatched, that's the word I'm looking for. It's hatched. This is the pair that always nests in the same spot at Treehouse Dam. And it's the first little chick. Hello, baby. You're so fluffy. Oh, it is so tiny. It's just tripped over a pile of mud as you were coming to us. <laughs> we had a solid giggle. Shame. Still getting used to walking. Those legs are really long and really difficult to control. Oh, little one. Careful, it's a bit wobbly. <laughs> oh my goodness, that thing is so tiny. Can you hear the adults are calling? There must be more eggs. You can see mum's calling it closer. Saying, hello, don't go too far. I'm over here. Jennifer, I know, right? It is so exciting when we have new life. It's that season. It's the best season to be in the bush. If you're wanting to see new life, now's the time. Oh, are there more? Or are they just eggs still? Come on, come cuddle. Oh, cute. <laughs> Look at the adult getting comfortable with the shimmy. It's literally the size of the adult's head. That must be the first hatchling. It's always possible that there were more that hatched, but they might be spread out. Or they might not have made it. But the way that this adult was still sitting there while the chick was wondering makes me think that the others haven't hatched yet. There should be three or four eggs there. So we should have three or four chicks. Oh, get comfortable. Shimmy, shimmy. So it's interesting, they have changed it up a little bit this year. Where they've got the nest now, because they... <laughs> the chick is stuck underneath her wing. As usual, it's where they like to be, but that was very funny seeing legs sticking out of this one's chest. Um, where they had the nest, they lost the previous one. So this is the second clutch of eggs that they've laid for the season of ready. But where they laid eggs the first time was to the right of that little branch you can see on the right of the blacksmith lapwing. Now they've chosen a hollow that looks like it was created by buffaloes when the, the soil was still muddy and it's created an impression. And then they dug it out a little bit. I remember seeing them digging that spot nicely rubbing against it trying to make it comfortable. <laughs> Andrew, the video guy, isn't it amazing? This lapwing family has given us so much joy in the last few years. Every year, without fail, they are here raising chicks and we see them go from these tiny little fluff balls to, I mean, adult lapwings that 
leave home. They go off and become independent. So the way it keeps putting its beak down again, can you see how it puts it down to the floor? The adults of the blacksmith lapwings are kind of responsible for removing the eggshells. So while it's shimmying to get the chick comfortable, I'm wondering if it's not fidgeting with the other eggs a bit, trying to move maybe the shell from this little one that's hatched, but possibly also assisting some of the others. Because this little chick would have left the nest literally within hours of hatching. It would be wandering around like it is now stumbling. Oliver, it's an interesting one. I think they definitely could injure their chicks accidentally, any bird species, because the adults are a lot bigger than the chicks. Um, they are very lightweight, so birds are a lot lighter than a mammal equivalent of the same size. But I think it is still possible because the chicks are so fragile, it's definitely possible that, for example, if there's a rushing situation, just as a, I don't know, a theory, I suppose, if there's a any form of rushed situation, maybe a predator comes along and they're trying to get the chick covered and the chick's not in a good position when they either sit on it to try and tuck it under the wing, it's possible to injure especially a wing or the neck or possibly even the spine and definitely the legs on such a long lap wing too. It would definitely be a possibility that something wouldn't sit quite right. But um, nature has its way of sorting these things out. So I think it is, it's maybe uncommon, but it is possible. That little chick probably only weighs a few grams, literally. Like you could fit it into a teaspoon. That's how small it is. Oh, wow. You're doing a great job of hiding that little one. I can't wait to hear from the crew how many others hatch. And watch the lives of these little things as they get bigger. We were actually on our way to Ribbon's Den site, who's another member of the Juma clan, and Panda spotted the little chick. He got so excited he nearly jumped off the car. <laughs> Ooh, magic dragon wizard, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, what are we looking for? What are you hoping for, for this fine day of yours that we are celebrating you? Wow, happy, happy birthday. That is really cool to hear. Thank you for sharing that with us. But we need to try and find you something specific. Is there anything that you want to really, really see today? Maybe it was new life? Then we can add another one to the bucket list. <laughs> I just can't get comfortable this adult. That is so funny. I'm seeing something to the right of it that looks very white. Are you seeing that panda in the hollow? I wonder if that's possibly an eggshell that it's pushing up or is that the chick again coming back out I don't know oh it's a feather it's a very misaligned feather <laughs> you're looking a bit ruffled blacksmith lapwings are probably one of the best bird parents out here so vicious when it comes to protecting the nest protecting the chicks I wouldn't walk up to them if you paid me Can you hear the very high-pitched chirping? Every now and then you'll see this little lapwing chirping away. And then you might hear the sound, there was one. So even though the chick is quite literally underneath its wing, it's a very calming sound chick and it helps it get used to the adult's voices if they chirp every couple of seconds. And that way, if the chick goes wandering and the adults start chirping, they're encouraging it to come back, to follow them wherever they're going, especially if there's going to be danger around. Being birds that nest on the floor has its disadvantages, but they are exceptionally good parents regardless. I don't know if that's one of its feathers that's poked out like that panda. I have a feeling there might be two chicks and one was already under the wing and that might be a part of the chick we're seeing because there was another feather poking out at the same angle on the other side. Why are you whispering? 
Your voice wouldn't come out. <laughs> oh, this is so funny watching it trying to reposition. It must be very uncomfortable when you're used to having just yourself that you're holding. And then all of a sudden you have to try and hold multiple chicks underneath the wings. It almost looks like it's trying not to drop them. I think there definitely might be two, actually, one on each side. Maybe the one was just getting really explorative. <laughs> Looks like it's falling out all the time. <laughs> Careful, little one. See how fluffy it looks on the right-hand side there as well, as though that feather is also sticking out for something. Maybe it has just been ruffled by the chick and all the movement. And there it's pecking at the nest again. All the little egg bits being disposed of very, very carefully. This is brilliant. The Spooktober is all about scales. In honor of Reptile Awareness Day, Wild Earth is hosting a fireside chat with James Henry and reptile expert Chris Cook. You are at risk of being bitten by it. Come along as we talk all things reptiles and learn more about the scaly soldiers of the safari. Don't miss out. Watch it live on your nearest device. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Well, everybody, can you see it? Can you see it moving? We can't anymore. There was a large female tortoise that exited the road. It's now hiding. Center screen. Lola, are you loving the greenery? Well, the greenery is very, very good for the environment here. Yeah, the vegetation is growing, the trees, the grass is all good, the herbivore animals are feeling strong. The tortoise here is going to do very well. But it has been a bit of an interesting event on the roads. The roads have been quite wet and inundated. A large portion of the reserve is not open. Some of the, the roads are inaccessible and there is more rain on its way, apparently. Not 
that is probably one of the best tortoise sightings ever. Yeah, this is a very tricky one and uh, just our apologies for framing it. <laughs> literally a tree up because this is the one I in a den here at Eco Training and you can see the entrance there but I know for a fact this is right on the edge of our signal capabilities and if we go any closer to them anywhere else they um, our signal will totally disappear but there are two cubs there and, and there is an adult lying to the left and there's another sub adult in front of them we're not going to move too much too far to the left let's see one of the adults in the foreground here because two things we we got, we're in a dodgy signal area and then also if we move the camera too much you know there's extra encoding and all sorts of things happening and we uh, we're just going to hang it out here and then perhaps after this segment we'll try and see if we can't hello <laughs> get a, a slightly better view of them but this will do for now cuteness monk reckons i'm on a roll already <laughs> Oh, well, it's eco training. <laughs> well, we know that this den is, yeah, it's an established den site that the one or portion of the clan has been using for quite some time. And like I said, it, it's, it's one of those spots where we just struggle a lot of times to to get signal. But I do know this little spot where we are works but like i said we will try and investigate if we can't i just i'm going to move it now because a meter will make a difference here i mean, actually had a very good view when they were at the entrance and then they moved as soon as we went live a little bit of a murphy's law They have grown. I saw them two weeks ago, they were still black. <laughs> Walter, 100%, um, you know, we've been very privileged with the hyenas of light. And As well as the wild dogs. I forgot about them. <laughs> I believe they were seen somewhere close to our entry gate this morning as well. See, these hyenas are now starting to resemble adults. Slightly. The face is starting to look like hyena. They don't have this sort of like bear-like complexion anymore. Remember I spoke about all the green leaves coming out now? You can also see there in the foreground and background there's a couple of bushes that's already green while we wait. Oh, there's a wisteria that's beautifully green at the moment. I'll keep an eye on those hyenas and shoot their return we'll head there. But as you can see in the background there the grass itself is still very dry. The only thing that will sort that is I can't believe our luck right now oh my goodness we've just seen a diker dart across the road as we were getting towards ribbons den site and the leopard came out right behind it wow I haven't seen a leopard in days my heart is just bursting right now Hello, girl. It looks 
Fuck suck, it's Tlalamba. Tlalamba is our queen of Juma. If anyone can confirm that for me, please let me know. Very heavy belly looking. Rounded, hanging down with some mammary glands. I think it's Tlalamba. Nice bold rosettes. Oh my goodness. Panda and I both just had a proper freak out. It, honestly, Jordan, the lovely voice in my ear saying this is just so perfect. Lapwing chicks, a leopard. I mean, I'm actually just in awe right now. In absolute awe. Hello, gorgeous. I think she was busy hunting. And we just saw this dyker darting away. I think it spotted her and she came running out afterwards. She was busy attempting to hunt. You can see how the tip of her tail is curled up in white. So it's not completely up. So she hasn't admitted defeat, but she's halfway there. She's thinking about it. Yes, it is Tlalamba. Thank you, Kimberly Lopez. Thank you, everybody. It is Tlalamba. So this is our beautiful queen of Juma. We are waiting for her to have cubs. Hello, girl. We've been looking for you. We have been looking for you. So she is the probably predominant female leopard on Juma at this point. She has been up and down, so moving off of Juma a lot to the property in the east and coming back again. But the fact that she's spending more time here in the last few days, oh, look at that belly. It's very telling because she likes to den on Juma. Oh, look at that yawn. <laughs> Have you given up the chase, girl? Somebody's watching the show. I haven't even had a chance to call this in. <laughs> Top Cat is, it's just, I can't believe it. Everything's coming out today and it just makes me really, really happy. Oh, she's so close. Hello, girl. Where are you going? Straight behind Panda. You want to say hi to Panda too? I agree. He is fabulous. Not as fabulous as you, but almost. Okay. Just giving her a minute to move. She's right behind us, so I can't reverse. I'm freaking out right now, that's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna reverse in there now that she's given us some space. Ah, best day ever. <laughs> it's just perfect. Just absolutely perfect. It's gonna be a three-pointer, everybody. Hold on. <laughs> First bump for that one. Yes. Hello, girl. You going to the dam? Please don't go and discover that little lapwing chick, though. That would not be very kind. We're going to watch her walk for a bit. And I think I may have lost radio signal. Uh, Jordan, if you could please ask Cedric to call that in for the radio. I've lost radio signal. I am on Savage's track. And she is headed straight towards Treehouse Dam from the southern side. Thank you. It's amazing. We had signal five meters backwards and now the radio signal's gone. Just in time, you know, <laughs> when we want to call it in. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate it. Thank you, Cedric. Appreciate it. Oof. Okay, straight into the thickets. I'm going to go in on the side because it's Tamboiti trees here and Combretums and I don't want to drive over those. So I'm going to go in on the side. Yes. Perfection. Hello, girl. <laughs> oh. Stacey, my heart, thank you. A queen sighting for a queen naturalist. That is, yes, you're going to start the tears early. I'm going to fight it for as long as I can. <laughs> thank you. Okay, she's coming down. Oh, she's just in front of me. It's part of the dog. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we might actually have to, Panda, disappear around to the other side of the dam. Actually, we might be able to make it through that gap. I reckon we could. Hello, girl. Yeah, I reckon we'll make it through that gap. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, while we are getting around to her, I'm going to send you back to Chris because he is repositioned already and he's ready for you. Our plan has worked. Our plan has worked. Okay, so we've managed to move a little bit and get a slightly better view. And it does seem like we can see one of them. I can't see if it's an adult or... Oh no, there is the youngsters. It's an adult and one of the cubs, yeah. There we go. Just hidden behind a green leaf. Toying with something there. And uh, so just that <laughs> bug in my mouth. <laughs> um, anyway, again, going back to my earlier conversation, it's 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 fortunate that we have something like this. filled with tricks and treats. From the creepers to the crawlies, we're scouting the creatures that keep you up at night. Hang on to your seats as we debunk the myths behind the safari scariest. Turn out the light and lock your door. There's a spooky safari coming to your home. Come along for some hair-raising fun this Halloween with Wild Earth. The blue deep thou wingest. And singing still dost soar, and soaring ever singest. Water.
every cell that makes up the wonders of our natural history needs this life-sustaining molecule. Sometimes in tiny amounts, sometimes in torrents, our blue planet, flush with biological wonders, would be a desolate, lifeless place without miraculous H2O. Right, so um, the, the dynamics of the hyenas here, I, I don't fully yet understand it all, and I know who's who, and better because I've not really spent so much time with them. A lot sort of spent outside of our signal range, and and this is where this opportunity lies. This is now that opportunity for us to spend a bit more time, get to know our screenshots, ID kits. You know, there's opportunities for us here. And to help each other out here, you know. I don't know, there's some work being done on these you know? Anyway. I signal some issues. Uh, so we're going to head over to Amakala and see if we cannot perhaps get a better spot. And welcome back to the bottom of a Cape Mountain zebra. There he is again. And you see the dewlap on the neck. It's very characteristic of the Cape Mountain Zebra. Also the white belly and the gridlock pattern of stripes on the rump. Um, our typical plain zebra that's got the shadow stripes, whereas the mountain zebras do not. And these guys have got much longer ears. Lots of similar behaviours, the mountain zebra, to the plain zebra in the herd mentality. Herds are a little bit smaller with one stallion and his mares. And also the stallions are very intolerant of foals that are that have either lost their mom or don't belong to him. That one's lost its tail. So in the 1930s, the species nearly became extinct. They were hunted for their coat, unfortunately, and uh, believed to be competition for cattle. 1937, the numbers were so low that they established the Cape Mountain Zebra National Park close to Craddock, where they started a very low number and have since grown quite a bit with the uh, mountain zebra being moved to reserves like the Huap, Bonsbrook National Park, Karoo National Park and I'm not sure where else but here also on Amakala. So you can see they're much more donkey like than the virtual zebra. Helena, well, these appear to be two males to me. Um, they're standing quite away from each other, but you know, generally you get a, a stallion who gets dominance and then will start to collect a harem. Um, you don't really find females alone in general. They are in a harem, in a herd, but there's definitely a hierarchy that develops between them, very similar to that in the virtual zebra. 
the first mare to be acquired by the stallion will be the, the, the top of the, the chain. And when it comes to social dynamics like drinking or dust bathing, the stallion is generally first in both, followed by the lead mare and so on. It's a pecking order. They love to dust bath. You can see they're quite dirty, these two. That's from the mud. They love to roll in the, the wet earth afterwards. That is to eradicate ticks. And I think they also enjoy a good scratch. What a shame. It's lost the tail probably through fighting. They do nip and bite at each other and kick as well. Hmm, I think this actually might be a female. Stripes all the way down to the hooves. And as you can probably see, they are a grazer. I know a friend of mine, when I was doing my masters, was doing her masters on the Cape Mountain Zebra in Cape Mountain Zebra National Park, and she was observing their feeding and what they fed upon. So she'd observe them like this, and as they moved off, she'd go and sample the grass vegetation that they'd fed on to get species counts or species eaten, and then lots of other stuff as well. Okay, well, sounds like Juma's back online. Let's send you back over to Cedric. Well, we've got the fastest land animal at the moment, as you can see, running across the road at high speed. No, I'm joking. And uh, trust me, the signal or the feed has not frozen. It's just that the flap chameleon is frozen. <laughs> it doesn't want to move, but it's moving with great stealth and uh, not much speed in that so of course he doesn't want to get uh, spotted by maybe a bird of prey or a snake so it is just moving very slowly across this road how awesome is this a flap neck chameleon and you see a little bit of the black coming on its body so sometimes i'll get those little kind of black blotches that come through and I'm just trying to blend in as much as possible for this with the surrounding it looks like it's also shed its skin recently. And you see on the back end and on the tail, the whiteness there. It looks like old skin. That's pretty busy peeling away. But look at, look at that back left leg now. <laughs> this is amazing. How nice is this, eh? And look at that eye. So, he doesn't want to move quickly. If you move quickly, of course, then you'll find the predators will spot you much easier. But if you're going to move like a bit of a sway, sometimes they'll sway back and forth. Hmm? All right, well, we're going to continue. Let's head over to Tess. So she's managed to relocate on Tlalamba. You got us back at the perfect time. She spotted something else. Sitting beautifully on a tree that's been pushed over by the elephants. And we don't know what it is yet that she's spotted. But she keeps looking over to her right. Isn't she looking fabulous? The tip of the tail's going the most beautiful Tlalamba pose. So her name means mischievous and playful and that's exactly what she is. And that tail is showing all of that personality right now.
The direction she's been staring in towards the right is actually straight towards those den sites on Taxon's Road, the hyena dens. I don't know if there's maybe an adult hyena moving around somewhere in the bush here. Or maybe she spotted another diker or another stand-back. <laughs> Tom, it's worked out pretty perfectly, hasn't it? A spectacular drive and it's so early on. Oh, hello, girl. Look at you. Wow. Look at her belly. She is looking very prominent where her teats are. My goodness, girl. What's going on? Ooh, camouflage. Right, and off she goes. Time for us to try and follow. And you won't believe it, but in spectacular timing. It's also started spitting with rain. How weird. I love it. She looks like liquid gold when she moves. There's something about her. Reminds me a lot of her mum, the, the the previous queen of Juma, Miss Tundi. Between her and her mum, they're probably the two leopardesses that I spent the most time with in my time here. So this is pretty perfect. Hi, Miss SA, she is stunning. She is amazing, she is gorgeous. She is all of the things a perfect leopardess should be. Where are you going, big girl? So if she keeps going this way, she's actually gonna pop up on the next road called Philemon's Cutline. We're pretty close there now. Isn't it miraculous how easily she can camouflage herself? We better not lose her, panda. We've got other people wanting to come and look at her too. It'd be rather selfish if we lost her by accident. Oops. So I'm giving her some space. I'm not driving directly behind her or to the side of her. I'm giving her a decent amount of space as we go around and find the gaps. Just because I also don't want to disturb her. You know, if she is on a hunting mission, vehicles cause a lot of attention to be drawn. So if we're off to the side and something looks our way, it's not going to spot her because we're not in direct line of sight. We're giving her space. All about the apex. Some holes here. Hold on, panda bear. You got your seatbelt on? <laughs> okay. That must be a new installation. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> girl oh, the way she just stands and the tail goes oh she's been spotted by a bird there look at her tail up that is a leopard sign of I know you spotted me I'm just moving through I'm not here to cause any trouble look at the tail going you can see the tail from a mile off I'm just gonna chat on the radio quickly while we move. Uh, Dion, you might be able to hear me starting up and moving. We're just west of Taxons Road, still moving north in the block, so maybe come up Taxons and then switch off and listen for my vehicle, come west into the block. No, don't go around to Philemon's yet. I think come in west from Taxons. She's going towards a big termite mountain now. getting someone else in. Perfect timing for her to have a little stop on the perfect termite mound. Oh, she spotted something again. Isn't that amazing how communicative her tail is? All right, I'm gonna have to chat on the radio again when I hear that vehicle getting a bit closer so I can guide them in west. Oh, 
she is seeing something. What have you got, girl? I'm just going to chat on the radio again quickly. Uh, Dion, I've got your audio. Maybe come another 50 or so meters north and then cut west. You'll see her on a big termite mound next to the very dead Leadwood. It's time to tap into your owl like wisdom and elephant like memory. Gear up for a month of animal quiz mania this November. Teams will pit against each other every Saturday for some good old fashioned interactive fun on the Sunset Show. To enter, form a team of at least two people, fill out the form on our website, and name your team. Come along and put yourself and your challenges to the test. Wild Earth, bringing the fun to the safari. Hmm, everybody, welcome back. We're just waiting for our zebras to pop out again. It's nice to spend some time with the endangered Cape Mountain zebra, Equus zebra zebra. That's the species name. There are two subspecies. One is this one, the Cape Mountain zebra, occurs in the Western Cape. And the other one is the Hartman's Mountain zebra, which occurs up in Namibia, called Equus zebra hartmanii. Many, many, I don't always know how to pronounce an A and an E at the end of a word. Found in mountainous areas where there's good grazing, and sufficient water available. And uh, with the weather we've been having, adequate ravines for sheltering are important, part of their habitat. And they need to live in areas that are rocky to file down their hooves. The hooves are ever growing and they grow faster than the plains of zebra, who also consequently files down their hooves through movement. And they're very much dependent on water, drinking twice a day. And they've been known to even dig for water in a riverbed. bed. 
Sally, probably the fact that humans moved in and occupied a lot of their range, their habitat. Um, a lot of species, I mean, the Cape Mountain Zebra occurred down in the Western Cape. There's a number of species that occurred down here that disappeared altogether with the arrival of settlers. And uh, the blue antelope, the Cape lion, and species that occur th through other parts of Africa that occurred down here were completely wiped out. It was a, it was a place where people came on safari originally and safari for the most part in the beginning in these parts of the world were definitely for the, the hunting side and the destruction of habitat for agriculture would have been a major contribution and as said before they were hunted for their skins up until the 1930s so with people being in the area for 200 years or 150 years before that that's a long time and these individuals since I've been here have been rather suspicious so it's nice to guide somewhere where they occur I spent some time with a number of herds in San Borno Reserve last year and I took a private guest there but I don't know how many occur here. They're all here on the northern part, this northern section of Amakala. I'm not sure what the number is at the moment. Yes, cheetah and other animals. The quacha was another species of zebra that occurred in the Cape and they were completely wiped out many years ago. They don't occur anymore. I think they were very similar to the Cape Mountain zebra and other species. And eradicated again no doubt for their coats and for potential competition that they would have created with livestock it's all very sad but it is history it is what happened these areas back in the day would have been profoundly abundant with large herbivore animals migratory moving through the seasons so the claiming of land for agriculture and introduction of fences and the prolific hunting eradicated many many species protected areas started forming the Kruger in the 1920s for that exact reason people in Pretoria used to walk out of their houses and hunt and it became more and more difficult they had to go further and further and further and it was one of the reasons that Paul Kruger created what became the Kruger National Park it was an area where no hunting would take place to allow the game to breed to a point when they would have been sustainably hunted. Um, he decided that in the early 1900s and that was that legacy was taken on years for years and years and then the 1920s the Kruger Park was proclaimed and that eventually became more and more and more area. It was quite small initially and more land got included under the banner. So the species, the wildlife we find in South Africa they all are in protected areas. Well, it looks like our suspicious zebras are not going to show themselves again. Too bad. Maybe they feel imminent rain and they're going to go shelter in the ravine they were inquisitive at one point and they seemed to want to come out okay well we're going to move on see if we can find you something else that's awesome in the meantime back over to Cedric All right, so we are still heading uh, around at the back of our camp, still trying to follow up on uh, maybe that young male leopard uh, known as a Marips or Fluffy Ears. Um, so no luck at the moment, but well done. Nice. On Tessa's last drive, she's got a Tlalumba. Fantastic. What a beautiful, uh, you know, um, goodbye moment. Yes. Wonderful. So, 
Good to have a female leopard once again coming further into Juma and coming north. I wonder if she's not going to end up here coming to the dam tonight, Ngari Dam. And I mean, Marips were seen around here last night as well. So that's what I'm busy doing. I am trying to see if we can find that young boy. Yeah, uh, Jordan, me too. I think uh, we all will be very happy to see Marips. Um, so yeah, let's see. We haven't heard. I haven't heard uh, Mawati, the big male leopard, rasping here around uh, this area for quite some time. So I don't know if where is he, where is he gone to, and what's happening to him. But he's around. Well, I haven't seen male, big male leopard tracks here, except for tortoise pan. You know, well, tortoise pan is busy mating now with Langa, um, and that's been seen on Shirley's Arethusa. Uh, this morning, so they that side. So tortoise pan won't be on Juma today, unless something's happened and he's decided to leave that area and come straight back east down to Juma. So we will take a look and uh, find out. And um, yeah, believe me, uh, better be in a vehicle than on foot with these guys at this distance. They will not be happy if we're on foot. And that's a 700 plus kilogram animal. It's gonna hit you at 40 kilometers an hour. And those horns and those horn bases combined with its momentum will be lethal weaponry.
can see a little bit of green grass in between there. Interesting. It's not had much rain yet. And now there are rain predicted for tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. So nice having you back, uh, Chris. Oh, good to hear your name again that side in Pridelands. I'm sure you're going to get uh, plenty, I'm hoping that you're going to get plenty of uh, cat sightings that side. I'm sure you will. Sure you will. But anyway, back the side, yeah, at Juma. I, my plan now, sorry, I just had a squirrel on screen, but the squirrel ran away and um, as we went live, so that squirrel did not want to be seen. But, to go to the western area because at Pride of Lions we had this morning, or not the Lions itself, we had the tracks and uh, the tracks moved from the northern area, it must have been the, must be the Talamati breakaways, it looks like it uh, moved from the northern area and they went all the way south from the Bifelzook right through to Little Gauri because the buffaloes ended up going that side so what I'm going to do I'm going to work the western area because we also had female leopard tracks that side in the west. I'm going to work the western area, go take a look. Maybe we're lucky with um, Shadulu or another leopard that side, I'm not too sure, Kara. Uh, or maybe we're going to get, uh, get uh, those lines coming back later on. But anyway, while we do that, I think let's head over to Tess to see what's happening, happening with Tlalamba. Another leopard or lions would be fabulous, Sid. Well, we finally managed to catch up with the queen. She is giving us some hard work today. And we figured out what she was interested in. There were some impalas around. They haven't actually spotted her, so she's slowly edging closer. She's been quite adamant. She's going straight towards the area of Philemon's Dip, which I'm sure lots of you are familiar with. There she sat down. So I'm going to move us a little bit forward as soon as this vehicle has moved behind us. So we don't want all the vehicles moving at the same time when she is sitting still. She's chosen a good hiding spot. Sorry, I'm having a giggle because the other guide didn't know where she was and he's parked right next to her. <laughs> that was quite funny. Okay, I'm going to try and sneak us just a meter forwards, Panda. Oh wait, she looks like she's going to move. There we go. Yeah, she's coming back towards the road even better. And isn't she looking fabulous? Oh, Bill Myrtle, it's good to hear from you and thank you very much for sending on that message. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I will never forget the, the brown-headed parrots with you, actually. Looking for the brown-headed parrots at Gauri Dam, I know how much you enjoy them. So thank you very much for saying you're going to miss me. I'm going to miss everybody a lot. It's going to be a very big change and very different. And I'm very grateful for all of you. You've really changed my life in more ways than there are actually words to count. Let's say, pull yourself towards yourself. <laughs> Trying hard. <laughs> oh, beautiful girl. Stay right there. Thank you. She is gorgeous. She certainly takes, uh, takes the cake today. This has been the most fantastic day.
I'm sitting in a Tlalamba sighting with one, two, three, four of my favorite people. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Panda, Peter, Tristan, and Dion. Four in one plus Tlalamba. Best way to spend the afternoon. Oh, we might have a vehicle coming through. <laughs> Do you want to come through, Dion? You want to come through? Okay, no worries. Panda, will you please frame on a leaf for us? <laughs> so, that be, so that Dion can come through. <laughs> Beautiful leaves, Panda, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting all the goodbye messages from everyone sitting in the sighting with us. Um, Charlie, female leopards will move around within a territory usually. They can move with uh, kind of outside the borders of their territory, if that makes sense, for extreme circumstances. But usually they have a fairly set territory. And within that territory, they move around looking for food, looking for water, looking for den sites, looking for mates whatever they decide. The most extreme circumstance where a female would go out of her territory and which seems to be the easiest draw to go out of her territory and we see it multiple times is when females move out of their territory into another female's territory to mate with a specific male. So in fact this morning I believe and yesterday um, Lunga who is a young female leopard that is normally quite far south came incredibly far west to mate with tortoise pan the big male leopard in the west. Now, normally within Lunga's territory, she is in the territory of Mulawati, who is a massive male leopard across the vast majority of um, Juma. He is the dominant male, and in fact, he is the leopard who has been mating with, with this lovely girl. But he is actually that other female leopard's father, and so she's moved way west out of her territory to mate with a different male leopard who is not her father, and she's been there for the last two, two days or so out of her territory but usually they tend to stick within a territory itself because they sent market for a reason they keep it for a reason they try and stick within the boundaries so they can avoid unnecessary conflicts with other animals particularly other leopards but they do wander around occasionally if they fail they need to then they will Belgian watcher, you think I should come back in a couple of weeks to see Tlalamba's cubs and meet them? <laughs> I don't know when she's going to have them, but I will definitely try and come back. I don't think it'll be within the next few weeks, though. But I will be watching to meet her cubs, and I will be watching to see how everybody is progressing, and I'm more than happy to stay in touch. I'd really love that. So I might not be back in a few weeks, but I'll definitely try and come back when I can in the future. I'm going to miss catching up with everybody every day, not just the people, but the animals too. It's going to be different. <laughs> she's very still now. It's like she's thinking. She's still hearing things. The impalas are still off to the right. So I think she's analyzing. Anna, good afternoon. I think the reason why maybe there's this misconception that leopards don't call a lot is because when they are usually active is during the night and it's normally when we're not with them. So you might hear them calling in the distance, but they have to be close enough for you to be able to hear them and that, that they're not always close enough. So they do actually vocalize quite a lot. They vocalize when they're being territorial, when they're looking for mates, when they're mating. Um, so being solitary actually doesn't have anything to do with the vocalizations. In fact, it's probably one of the reasons why they would want to vocalize, to advertise where they are that the territory is taken, or to advertise where they are to call a mate, or to advertise that they're mating. So it's probably just that we don't really get to witness it very often at all. It's a very rare thing to be sitting with a leopard when it vocalizes, when it calls. The reason she's not calling now is because she wants to hunt. She's looking for food. So if she was to call, she would give her location away to every herbivore and food source in the area. Maybe other than something like a tortoise that would be too slow to move away. <laughs> but everything else would 
go running for the hills if they heard her. She's been silent, silent. Now they're definitely not as vocal as things like lions, but again, their call will be softer and we just, we tend to spend more time with lions at that time of the day than, than with leopards. I think the most common time that we hear leopard vocalizations, even on the dam cam that's live at the main dam here at Juma, is probably anywhere between say 11 at night and maybe two, three in the morning. Then occasionally evenings and mornings as well can happen at any time, but there's definitely a peak during the, the later hours of the night and the early, early morning. So that's when they're moving around a lot. <laughs> the flies are bothering her, look how she's moving her skin. <laughs> Looks like she's got the jitters. <laughs> I know how you feel, girl. I just can't do that with mine. <laughs> oh, what a day. This Spooktober is all about scales. In honor of Reptile Awareness Day, Wild Earth is hosting a fireside chat with James Henry and reptile expert Chris Cook. You are at risk of being bitten by them. Come along as we talk all things reptiles and learn more about the scaly soldiers of the safari. Don't miss out. Watch it live on your nearest device. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. This leopardess is very busy with her ears. Typical leopard fashion, she's got the most brilliant senses. She's so well adapted and she can hear those birds in the distance. She can probably hear the impalas. So we're going to give her another minute or two and if she hasn't moved, then we'll move. See how interested in the noises she is. Any movement around her and she's focused. She really hasn't sat still for very long at all, so she's kind of showing off her camouflage. If we didn't know she was there, we'd very easily drive past her, and she's maybe only 20 meters off the road. But down in the grass like that, and in amongst some fallen bush willows, she's just perfectly camouflaged, even though it's green. She blends in like a termite mound, or a log. A leopard log panda, but this one's a real one. 
This doesn't count as one of my four for the afternoon. <laughs> we spotted a real leopard. And at, perfectly at the same time, both of us. It was great. Teamwork. <laughs> so Miss Tlalumba looks like she's finally starting to maybe have a nap. She's decided to use her ears but rest her eyes. So her head's starting to drop. We've got a vehicle in front of us, so I don't want to move too far forwards. We're just going to see if she is actually having a proper nap, because so far she's been a bit jittery and moving quite a lot with every noise of an animal around her. There, she's up again. <laughs> Not the greatest view, I know, but just to be with her is, is more than enough for me. Caroline, I would not say that male leopards are more more skittish than females. I think it honestly depends leopard to leopard and it depends how they've been habituated. So habituation forms a massive part of that process and the, the comfort zone of, of animals, whether it's leopards or lions or anything else. Leopards are particularly difficult, especially as cubs. Um, we like to have very strict rules and, and procedures and policies around that. You don't want to scare a leopard off from, from a young age. You want it to get very used to the fact that we are not a threat. So in all honesty, it's going to depend on the experiences in that leopard's life, as well as how it's been habituated. For example, I know some male leopards that are so relaxed and some that are completely skittish. As, a, as an example, father and son duo, incredibly skittish male leopard at the best of times is Mulawati, the very big male leopard who is dominant over most of Juma. He can be very relaxed in certain circumstances and incredibly skittish the rest of the time. He just doesn't tolerate vehicles and he just moves off. Um, but you look at his son, Maribs, who's a very young male leopard. He's the clown of Juma or Mr. Fluffy Ears. He's been gone for a while. He made a surprise appearance on the dam cam last night, though. Um, and he is one of the most relaxed male leopards I think I've ever seen in my life. So that's father-son. That's not based on genetics. That's not based on anything like that. It's all the process of habituation and the personality of each leopard. As an example as well, her previous litter of cubs, there was a difference between the two of them. So they unfortunately didn't make it. We lost them in August last year. And she had a male and female duo, the twins. Very naughty little things, very cute. And the one was much more skittish than the other for quite a lot of the time. Um, and it, it just happened to be what, what that leopard was feeling on the day. Uh, what might have happened, what they've experienced in their life, and just personality. Some leopards are more tolerant, some leopards are more bold, some prefer peace and quiet and solitude. A leopard can very easily choose not to tolerate us, so I don't think it has much to do with male, female. It has a lot more to do with each individual leopard. All right, she is settling quite nicely, so I might try to move us forward. I'm going to see, Panda, if we can maybe get around to the other side of that vehicle. I think that's a good idea. But while we do that, we are going to send you over to Cedric to check in and see what he's up to. <laughs> All right, now, I'm not understanding something here. There's a lot going on here. Because the tracks of the lions that's coming down... Um, down Zoe's here as for females, a few females, young ones, I'm sure because it came all the way from Biffelzook, uh, Biffelzook boundary, the northern areas, and it's coming down this road. But I asked the guys now that they find this pride of lions that's crossing to Little Gary, that's the southern side, uh, south of Juma, another property called Little Gary. And they said, no, they've got the black dam males there. So they've got the two male lions there, but they haven't got this pride of lions. So now I personally have, I, I personally didn't see these tracks crossing into, into Little Gari. Yeah, see it's still, yeah. I'm gonna try and follow up here. Maybe these lions might still be on uh, Juma. Because now I'm just trying to put one and one together here. And I think that's why uh, uh, all, all, all of a sudden thought when they said they've got lions in Little Gari following a herd of buffalo, I thought it was these ones, but it's not. It's not.
Uh, Hannah, how much do, does the cam ops help us uh, tracking? Hannah, nothing, not at all, no, not at all. Um, uh, no, look. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I know that the, of course, uh, I mean, you saw yesterday <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> um, Hannah, uh, you saw yesterday, Paul spotted uh, Tlalamba, so we, you know, we work as a team. No, we work as a team. I mean, uh, many a time I'll ask him, Paul, uh, have you got tracks here, Paul? Can you see on your side? And I'll turn this side instead of me going all the way that over onto the left hand side. And I'll ask him. So he will say, yep, I've got the track still going that side. So, yes, no, no, the cam ops, uh, they help us with the tracking. It's, uh, you know, it's fun. We are, we are a team. It's not like because they came up and I'm a guide yeah, that they can't do it. No, we work as a team. So, yeah. Look, I mean, uh, um, you know, muscles and poor. You can even track a, a squirrel through the grass here without even seeing a track. You can just hear it and smell it and yeah. Exactly Jordan and uh, Paul doesn't need any protection while doing that. They all usually give themselves up the animals. That's me! I'm sorry! <laughs> no, just joking. All right, anyway, on a more serious note, okay, so I'm just going to try and follow these uh, line tracks. I'm hoping that uh, I can see where they turned off. Um, num, 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 Yeah, so still, yeah, still going straight down. Unfortunately, I did uh, dr drive over these tracks this morning while I was trying to follow up on them. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> and there's nothing crossing into that side. All right, so there might be in this block. Uh, Jordan, I want to jump off quickly. Yeah, see the tracks have disappeared here now. I'm gonna just mark, just jump off here quickly. I just want to double check if we can find where these lines have gone. It looks like they turned into into this side. Hmm. Oh, all right. Let me try. From the creepers to the crawlies, we're scouting the creatures that keep you up at night. Hang on to your seats as we debunk the myths behind the safari scariest. Turn out the light and lock your door. There's a spooky safari coming to your home. Come along for some hair-raising fun this Halloween with Wild Earth.
And this is what's nice about this. Okay, he ran off as we drove past him, but realized, okay, we're not really there to try and harm him, and now he's calmed down. That's what I like to get Steenbock like this. And as I've said, they, they're common. We see them all the time as we drive, but the moment you stop, they run. Oh, we're going to lie down. <laughs> Look at those big ears there. Almost like a, like a wannabe kudu. Very big ears. I mean, if you look at the size, it, 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 it's enormous for such a small head. And that's one of their best senses are those ears. But now they panel that one backwards. Very cute. Very cute. Oh, what perfect timing you have. She was hiding, she got up, and she has climbed a tree. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Okay, we are just waiting for the vehicle to move in front of us so that we can move as well. Oh, and the tail is still going. Oh, this is fabulous, fabulous. <sighs> what a day, too good. Wow, oh, panda, she looks so good. Okay, I think what I'm actually going to do, panda, for now, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we can see her paws, we can go around the other side just now. We'll just let the vehicle come in on the other side and get a view of her face. We're going to keep some distance for them for a bit. Hello girl, my goodness, it stopped raining but it's still overcast so it is a bit of a challenging backdrop. Brilliant stuff Panda. See how she's still interested in something, she's got a view and she is using it to her advantage. of the day. We've had the giggles for the last, what, 15 minutes, Panda? Maybe 10. <sighs> you know those moments when you open a bottle that's got carbonated liquid in it, so any form of fizzy drink? Well, we had an explosion on the car. <laughs> a bad one. <laughs> As Panda opened his bottle, it sounded horrific. So the whole vehicle of guests next to us looked at us as though to say, what is wrong with you? And then we haven't stopped giggling since. It's been amazing. <laughs> Quentin, she is gorgeous, isn't she? It's like she's decided to show off this afternoon. She's decided to come, at, come back into Juma with full force and beautiful views. No Clalumba slip for us yet. Those paws hanging down. She's a big girl. A very big girl. Ah, oh, time for a nap. Isn't she just perfect? To me, she is one of the most beautiful leopardesses I've ever seen. Yes, she's got stunning eyes and a gorgeous face, but what stands out to me with her is the boldness of her rosettes. To me, her rosettes are much thicker than a lot of the other leopards around. She always stood out to me, and Tavangumi always stood out to me, who was a big male leopard in the northwestern corner of Juma. He's no longer with us, unfortunately. But he had spots in the middle of his rosettes. Very unusual. Having the best nap. Wow. 
What a spoil. She's chosen such a nice branch as well. She's got a little piece that's broken off on the right hand side where she's resting her paw, like a little shelf. <laughs> Stacy, thank you very much. The, the best royal wave I could ever ask for. Wow. To me, the best finds are the unexpected ones, and that's exactly what she did to us today. As we were turning the corner, they, she came bolting onto the road past a diker, or following a diker, and we had no idea she was there. I mean, we'd been with that lapwing chick for ages. She must have been right there. And we didn't see her. She looks so peaceful. Maybe she's chosen this as her spot to hang out, literally, until it gets a bit darker, because the impalas haven't moved off, they're still somewhere to the right of us. So if she's patient, she might actually be able to sneak up on them a bit easier when the light starts fading. all the birds calling none of them are even alarming it's like they've completely forgotten she's here so quiet for a minute I forgot there was another vehicle here <laughs> that cough snapped me back into reality I'm just soaking it all in this is the longest I've spent with Clalamba in a very long time she really is spoiling us today so this kind of day is why we say predators really do tend to come out and surprise us in the overcast or adverse weather. It really favours them a lot. Nice and overcast means you don't have to hide from the sun, you don't have to hide from the reflection that your coat is going to have in the sun too. It's going to make you look brighter and more obvious to the prey. You're going to be cooler, but at the same time, it just means that she has a lot more opportunity to move and hide herself without anyone knowing she's there. She almost had us fooled today, Panda. We would have missed her if we'd come through there 30 seconds earlier or later. It was just perfect timing. I'd like to think we would have spotted her hanging up in the tree like that. <laughs> but you never know. I just want to soak this moment in for as long as possible, but I think we're going to try and reposition now. She's settled nicely. We're going to try and get a face view for you from the front. We'll send you over to Steve, though, in the meantime, to see what he's up to in the Eastern Cape. Welcome to the Garden of Eden, where we have got water back at the top, Eland in the middle and giraffe at the bottom. Three of the largest animals we find around here. And the eland are quite suspicious. We haven't been able to get too close to them. They keep moving off. There's a couple little youngsters. And you can see on the right that one individual is busy browsing. They are a mixed feeder. Very selective mixed feeder, looking for the juiciest and tastiest tender shoots. Maybe 
even been known to to smash branches with their horns to displace leaves and even dig up tuberous roots and bulbs. Landon, it is the Garden of Eden, isn't it? Quite special. And we've also got a very large herd of red hartebeest here, just in case you thought we were shy on the animals this afternoon. They're all here. And some little babies in amongst. Oh, and some boisterous boys. Oh, watch out, there's children around. Very different horn structures with those two. But as a female on the left was pushing this individual away from her youngsters. Go play with the boys, that's right. Typical horn locking, knees on the ground. Very nice leverage in that position. Very difficult to push the other animal back. If they were standing upright, they could be pushed back quite easily. But typical of these types of animals, the wildebeest included. And Tessabi, here these females are saying, hey, hey, what you doing? And there's children around, shaking their heads, saying this isn't where you play. Go play over there. <laughs> There's a really small little one in the grass, well hidden. Hello. A little cuteness. Donovan, age 13, you know, the animals are feeding on the grass. They're down here in a little bit of the valley, so it's possible that the nutrients in the soil are quite good, and there's some nutritious grasses. But it's not just the grasses themselves are nutritious or not. This time of year after rain, the new shoots that pop out are much more palatable than the older shoots. So definitely mowing the lawn, grazing. I'll be moving around mowing the lawn throughout this area. And as the grass continues to grow, so the uh, new shoots continue to be produced, which are generally more palatable and palatability is the digestibility of the grass. But when you're a selective feeder, you're looking always for the most nutrient-rich vegetation. When you're a rhino with a huge mouth, you just gobble it all up, there's no selectivity. But the smaller the mouth part, the more ability you have to be picky and choosy. Waterbuck, on the other hand, are bulk grazers. Their mouth parts are relatively large, and they do enjoy nutrient rich, but vegetation high in protein. So yes, your, your question is probably very right. They are here because the vegetation is good and suitable for them. Okay, well it seems like Juma has been having a wonderful afternoon with hyenas. Let's go see if Cedric's found any more. All right, so I made my way to this new hyena den with a ribbon. As you can see, she is pretty much uh, tucked deep into the holes, just really a head and uh, the front quarter that's uh, sticking out the rest of her body is right inside of the den so we are hoping that we will maybe hear some cubbies but we are going to just listen out for now but she is tucked into that den so this of course this is that new hyena den that we found here on uh, savage track uh, maybe about 
a hundred meters east of a road called Shabamu Junction Road. But yeah, very much passed out. So this female hyena, uh, we only found her really yesterday afternoon. You know, yesterday afternoon at this uh, den, and uh, so we assume that uh, she's had cubs here now. Um, I'm not too sure exactly how many we haven't seen them or heard of, heard them yet, but uh, clearly her behaviour at the moment is uh, pretty much spot on with her actually having cubs here, especially that she's got her entire hind end in there, maybe for the cubs to suckle from her. But yeah, a little cubs or cub, hopefully two. Old ribbon. It's so nice. Clearly, she's not going to go anywhere for now. Hear that? Oh. Sorry, John, I'm just keeping quiet for now. Just listening out here. I just heard something. She's trying to come out now. And she's, she's making her way over. She's making her way out. Let's see, let's see, mate. Look at her behind her. Does it look like? What's happening there? Do you see anything interesting? She's going right in. It's time to tap into your owl-like wisdom and elephant-like memory. Gear up for a month of Animal Quiz Mania this November. Teams will pit against each other every Saturday for some good old-fashioned interactive fun on The Sunset Show. To enter, form a team of at least two people, fill out the form on our website and name your team. Come along and put yourself and your challenges to the test. Wild Earth, bringing the fun to the safari.
Uh, such such exciting times coming here now with uh, the Juma clan. I mean, now we've got practically one this this day inside. We've got the one now in Taxons where Gangarika was this morning. I'm sure she's there though this afternoon. Um, on Taxons, and then we've got the one on Elephant Carcass Junction Weaver's Nest where June and and Tima had their cubs. So nice. Looks like all, all all of a sudden, each almost like every female that's had cubs has got their own little home. Nemo, not bring him out. She might, un, you know, if uh, the little ones are suckling from her now, you know, sometimes they could be like I can say positioned wrong or you know in an area that she doesn't want that little cub to be at and then she'll just pick them up with her mouth and maybe we might get a glimpse of that and then she'll just tuck it put it back into the entrance of the the den so you know that's the only time but i think i mean if these are if the cubs are yeah i'm sure they are i mean that's the way she's acting yeah it's clearly that there must be something in that hole um you know, they're only about two, three days old. So, so they're way, way too young to even move around. Way too young. Okay, we can't see much now, huh? You can just see nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna move out and I'll move far away from here. All right, well, we're going to move away from uh, this den site, leave a little ribbon to her, her privacy here. Yeah. Let's head over to Tess. She's still sitting with the... Mm, sounds like it's been a spectacular afternoon at the new den site. I know I really wanted to go there, but I just can't bring myself to leave the Queen. She has treated us for a reason this afternoon, and I will take it. Look how perfect her resting position is. She's even chosen a tree that has a perfect bow in it for her belly. Look at the size of the belly. She just looks like royalty, which she is. She's the royal bloodline of Juma. She's in a deep sleep. I just can't get over the roundness of the belly though. It's so exciting. Ooh, careful. Even bigger now. Full extent hanging down. Goodness, girl. How on earth do you get comfortable with a belly that big pressed up against a very hard branch of a tree? Where do you put it? I mean, she spilled it out to the side, but my goodness. It's impressive. Bless you. <laughs> you tried to make that silent, but all you did was make the whole vehicle shake. That was really funny. <laughs> Excuse the jump that we had in the in the picture there, everybody. <laughs> Panda held his knees in so well, the whole vehicle nearly tipped over. Even La Lama woke up. What have you heard, girl? She's looking back towards the direction of the dam. So actually, Cedric is down that way somewhere. I wonder if those impalas have made a loop. Oh, do you know what it is, Panda? I can see zebras far in the distance there. I'm just seeing stripes through the bushes. They're coming closer. I don't think she'd be interested in getting them. <laughs> But I think she's just being aware of what's around her, which is a very good thing. Oh, we might see spots and stripes in the same sighting. What? Perfection. The zebras are coming closer. They're unaware, oblivious. Oh, there you can see the tails. Oh. <laughs> Chanel, no, I don't think I've ever encountered a leopard who doesn't climb trees. 
It is just what a leopard does. I have, however, encountered leopards that are not very good at climbing trees. That is more common than you'd think, especially in younger leopards. Cubs, of course, I mean, it's a granted, it's a, it's a given. Granted, it's a given. There you go. That's the one I was looking for. It's a given that, that leopard cubs are not going to be very good at climbing and especially not very good at coming down. But even some that are adult, you know, they tend to get up all right, but coming down is still a bit of a problem. And the best example of that is actually her brother, the young male I was talking about earlier that's very relaxed. The clown Mr. Fluffy Ears, Maribs. He is very good at climbing very strange trees that are way too small to hold his weight. And he's even better at falling out of them spectacularly. I've seen him fall out of trees more times than I can count. And it's nothing against him. He's, he's fabulous. I think he's just, he's a clumsy young leopard. That's what they should be, I suppose. And she spotted something else behind me. Oh, I feel like we're in the hot seat. The zebra's coming in on the left, her staring at something on the right. What did you spot, girl? She's so focused. I actually saw leopards mating in a tree once. On a branch about the size of the one that she's lying on now. That was Arangala. A big male leopard there mating with quite a small female up in a tree I've never seen anything like it until that day and not since that day either the balancing skills were impressive and you know what it's like as well when leopards are finished mating the female tends to turn around and smack the male he can't really bounce anywhere because he's got to watch his balance it was quite entertaining to watch certainly a unique situation that I don't think I'll ever see again in my life now she's bouncing back to look at the zebras. So she doesn't really know where her focus should be. Which I suppose it must be quite hard to fine tune into one specific thing when you're a leopard. Your senses are so good that you'll be picking up on everything. So for her, she can hear the smallest squirrel moving. She can hear a bird calling far in the distance. She can hear everything. Concrete jungle man, there is more than enough room up there for another snuggle buddy. I'm not volunteering. Now there is Panda. But it would be nice to see her in a tree with another leopard. That being said, it wouldn't be very likely. We've seen her actually on the same road on a marula tree just down the way. We've seen her with her two cubs from last year that didn't survive, plus her mum and the father of her cubs, all in one tree. I don't know if you all remember that sighting. It was absolutely spectacular. Three generations of leopards plus the dad. Was that the first time you ever saw her? What? That is a ridiculous sighting to have as your first Tlalamba sighting, Panda. My goodness, it puts mine to shame. <laughs> but there's more than enough cuddle room up there for maybe her younger brother. I doubt they'd get along very well if she's that comfortable. She might not want the company. But you never know. Leopards always tend to surprise us. What are you hearing now, girl? Use my cough and the sound of my seat as I'm moving. Okay, now she's very focused on the zebras. We know it's the zebras because the zebras are literally right behind us. <laughs> Now you will hear there's another vehicle here with us. You might have glimpsed it just now. They are soaking in Tlalamba. They are actually avid wild earth views. They've been on expedition. Tristan is with them. I met them 
earlier, previously, I've seen them a couple times now, absolutely brilliant people. So they're loving the sighting as well. What a spoil. and hounded. Reptiles and amphibians play a hugely important role in our planet's ecology. They represent an evolutionary memory. A reminder of our own fragility that the Anthropocene is surely a blink of evolutionary time. They may no longer dominate, but reptiles and amphibians remain a crucial and fascinating cog in the Earth's biological systems. Invertebrates. Insects. Mollusks. crustaceans, millipedes, arachnids, and myriad others. Some of life's most astounding designs. Welcome back to our Red Heart to Beast herd. Well, they typically live in herds of about 20 animals strong, consisting of a dominant bull, a number of cows with their offspring, and some subordinate bulls that we saw earlier. In favorable conditions, which used to be the case, they can aggregate in hundreds, if not thousands, of individuals. They used to migrate. 
Same with the wildebeest and springbok herds following the rain. So the nutritious grasses that we're talking about now, it's all very rain dependent. But as with a number of the animals you've spoken about there, numbers and populations were curtailed by agriculture and the construction of fences. So with the number of calves that we see there, the gestation period of about eight months, the cow goes away from the herd to give birth and the youngster will lie in thick vegetation or grass for a number of days with the cow returning to, to feed, suckle and to clean. When it's strong enough, she'll bring it back to the herd and uh, she protects it from inquisitive individuals, which we kind of saw earlier. As with all the plains antelope that we see, both male and female have horns. Females' horns are for protecting the babies. Regarded as one of the fastest antelope, reaching speeds of up to 70 kilometers an hour. Their eyesight is regarded as not being very good with their sense of smell and hearing the their top top sensors Kim you like the harmony well they they facilitate the feeding on the landscape you don't really see them right in amongst each other they will move around close proximity but they won't get too close to each other but typical of all the animals in the tribe we've got the red hartebeest the Lichtenstein's hartebeest black and blue wildebeest sesebi blesbok bontebok all very characteristic with that high shoulder to the hip and that sort of body structure enables them to to maintain quite a high speed they reckon about 60 kilometers an hour for up to 15 kilometers so proper marathon runners and the longer forelegs apparently are designed to assist in conserving energy in those long runs So don't forget everybody, this is a live and interactive game drive safari where your questions and comments are very valuable to us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to delve into what is interesting for you, of course. This is a learning and educational experience. Okay, well, I'm going to stay here a little longer with these guys and send you back over to Tess, who I think is still with Queen Tlalamba. <laughs> Tlalamba's come down the tree and she is being such a kitten right now. She's acting like a little cub. Her tail has got all of the sass. I don't know what got her attention, but my goodness. It's like she's thinking really hard. Something's in front of her, whatever it was that she was staring at just now. Look at that, she's interested again. From up in the tree, she spotted it and she's just decided this is it. I'm coming down, I'm investigating. You can hear birds having a fight in the background, but that's on the wrong side, so it's definitely not that. <laughs> oh, 
when she actually woke up because the hyenas started going wild. Something is upsetting the hyenas and one of the tiny cubs started calling. My goodness, I lost it a little. Uh, Martha, we definitely do think that she is pregnant, so she's got some pretty heavy <coughs> mammary glands. Oops, she's up, stalking something. She's got very big mammary glands and her teats are starting to show as well, which means she's getting ready for cubs to start suckling. So she's getting close to the end of her pregnancy now. Hasn't stopped her from being agile. Wow. She got something. She got something. She got a kill. She got a kill. It's something small, either a squirrel or a scrub hair. Don't worry, this one is going to pop back up. It's very flexible. <laughs> she just got a kill. <sighs> it's something tiny, maybe this big. Um, but Martha, yes, she'll use a den site to keep her cubs safe and she'll move den sites when she needs to. <laughs> I thought she was going for the squirrel that disappeared into this tree. There's a hole. Is that okay, Panda? I don't know what she got. Oh my goodness, this just keeps getting better and better. I can't deal with that. <laughs> what did you get, girl? I think it's a baby scrub hair. Look at the white fluff. Now she'll be scoping den sites out, Martha, while she's walking around. She's got a few that she's used and she uses them over and over again. And she leaves them at the den site when she needs to go and move, so when she needs to hunt and things. She is crunching right through something. That was unreal. <laughs> Joy, that was like a pocket-sized snack, a bite-sized snack. Just enough to give her a bit of a boost and she'll keep hunting, I'm sure. If she's growing cubs in there, she's got to keep feeding. I think it was a scrub hair, I saw white fluff. But I might be wrong. I don't think there'll be anything left for us to check. But I can see bits hanging down there. If you are a sensitive viewer, maybe don't have a look. Wow, fresh blood. My goodness, forget how red it is. Something's wrong with the hyenas. Something's upset them. And it's not La Lumba that's upset them. There might be a bit of a fight happening between the clan. I think Cedric has also heard it, so I think he might be moving. Okay, everyone, you know that thunder's a bit of a no-no for us. I'm a... Oh, it's attacking, attacking the monitor lizard. <gasps> Let's just watch this play out. <gasps> She's trying to protect her babies. <laughs> Shook the birds out of it. <laughs> He's gonna push this whole tree over. Casual. And look how he's looking at us. Guys, that is unbelievable. 
Well, sorry about that, everybody. Broadcasting from live locations has its difficulties. But our heart beast group is being very accommodating. See that female moving towards that youngish individual, sort of move away. There's a hierarchy amongst the females. They go through a process known as fencing, where they actually physically compete with each other. And the males, when they fight, are incredibly aggressive, very territorial. And the headbutting clashes can be heard hundreds of meters away. We saw before those youngsters dropping to their knees. And with those rigid horns, it is possible for them to get locked in together. I've seen that before with buffalo as well as kudu. The animals have then subsequently died, either dehydration or being caught by predators, the inability to get away. One of the guides here saw a hartebeest female aggressively interacting with a wildebeest on the southern reserve not so long ago. So when we think about that peaceful nature of these herbivores hanging out together, there's boundaries and there's space that is required. This Spooktober is all about scales. In honor of Reptile Awareness Day, Wild Earth is hosting a fireside chat with James Henry and reptile expert Chris Cook. You are at risk of being bitten by it. Come along as we talk all things reptiles and learn more about the scaly soldiers of the safari. Don't miss out. Watch it live on your nearest device. Wild Earth, it's in your nature.
Well, it's supposed to have started raining at three o'clock this afternoon. Um, the sun is shining in the west as it's setting underneath the cloud bank, but these clouds pulling in from the east definitely look to be quite laden, quite heavy. Blessings on the rain in Africa. The owners of Amakala are really happy with the uh, with the rain that we've had for the vegetation, but it has been tricky for many of the guests going out in the wet. Still, is quite something. Many people come from overseas to Africa, and they think it's going to be hot and sunny, and then they find that it's anything but that here yeah, in South Africa very seasonal seasonally dependent Typical, typical. Got a giraffe standing around for five minutes. <laughs> no, it wasn't five minutes, I'm joking. No, and now he moves off. Big male, big bull, very dark, and I can even smell him. These big old bulls have this characteristic sort of odor to them, and I can, uh, it's, it's got a strong odor, but it, it reminds me of lemongrass. You know when you take lemon grass and you and you, you break it. It's kinda like like that. From a distance, but when you get closer it's rather intense. It's not so pleasant when you're very, very close to them. Okay, he is moving away. <laughs> yeah, and he's on a mission now. No. Link, it is indeed a dark boy. I know there's a bull around that we call tall, dark and handsome, but I don't think this is it. That one is almost black. And this one is just like a very rich, dark color. And there's something about the giraffe in this particular region that they seem to be a lot darker than some other areas where I've operated in. I did see another one a little bit further ahead, so I wonder if we shouldn't perhaps just uh, drive another 100 meters or so ahead and um, see if we cannot see that giraffe. Well, we're going to do that. So let's go back to Tessa with Tlalamba to get an update. Salamba is giving us a run for her money, as usual. She's getting ready to give us the slip, I'm sure. And I'm, I'll be more than happy to give it to her, to be honest. We've had the most spectacular afternoon. I'm sure she's hungry and she's looking for a meal. Whoa. She's been very interested in multiple things. And there is another vehicle that wants to view her as well. So I think what we're going to do is once she moves off from here, we're going to let her go. We're going to let the other vehicle pass us and we'll let her disappear into the bush. Wow. She is fabulous. She made such quick work of that meal, of the hunt, of everything. Oh, there's birds in the road, Tlalamba. There's some spur fowls that you haven't spotted there. You've spotted them now. See how the tail immediately started going when she'd spotted the birds? She's trying to gather some information there. I take it another leopard is scent marked there.
Flemin Grimace, so she's kind of processing everything that she's smelling at the moment using the organ of Jacobson. It sits on the top of the palate. Oh, and she spotted something else. Those birds are getting so close. Look where the birds are, Panda. They're stalking right up to her. Oh, it's Crested Franklins, in fact, not Natal Spurfowls. I take it back. I apologize. That's my bad. Careful, birds. <laughs> See how she's lifted her tail because she knows they're going to start alarm calling. There, they've started already. Right, we're going to try and move. Don't know if I'll be able to go forwards. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I'll have to go backwards. Thank you, good sir, behind me for letting me reverse a bit. I don't smell any popcorn where she was sniffing. All right, I'm literally going to pull up here on the side. Oh, I've got a leaf friend. Hello. <laughs> when she pauses, we pause. We don't want to push her. So I'm going to pull up here on the side and watch her disappear and let the other vehicle come through so that they can follow her for a bit. We're leapfrogging. It's a really fun way to do things, a leapfrog. That might help Panda. Let me move the quarry bush. <laughs> stunning girl. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Oh. Okay, off she goes. I know some of you are probably wondering if I'm absolutely crazy letting her carry on on her way and not following, but I do think that it's time that we leave her in peace, let the other vehicle have their view, and then she can be alone to hunt as long as she wants to. We're gonna send you back to Cedric to see what he's up to while we let the other vehicle come past. Thank you. Nice. Tess, on your last uh, drive, spending some quality time with the Queen of uh, Juma. One. The full. Wonderful. All right. So, I've got an update that the two Black Dam male lines, they were coming north uh, towards uh, Juma, but pretty much on the far western. Oh, yes, some elephants. On the far western corner, but then all of a sudden they decided to turn uh, west into Arethusa. So no luck that side. But I'm sure there's another pride of lions here. Remember those lions, those lion tracks that I've been following, following up on, coming down on Zoe's. Um, I'm sure they must be somewhere in this area. So I am just going to hang around here, close to where Treehouse Dam is. So. See if anything pops out. Yeah, but how nice! We've got this herd of elephants, but it looks like they're just slowly but surely heading into more thicker areas. And we're not going to hang around with them too long, as we are losing a visual on them. A nice female with a couple of youngsters there. And it looks like that's it. There. They came, we saw, and they left. All right. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, let's move on. So I'm gonna go slowly back to the western side. Maybe do like uh, Monkey Orange Road. That's a road that's pretty much on our western border of uh, Juma. And I want to do those areas just to take a look if uh, maybe that Pride of Lions didn't turn west instead instead of east. Creepers to the crawlies, we're scouting the creatures that keep you up at night. Hang on to your seats as we debunk the myths behind the safari scariest. Turn out the light and lock your door. There's a spooky safari coming to your home. Come along for some hair-raising fun this Halloween with Wild Earth.
Smiles are off. I think looking over towards the sunset and the red heart of beast on the horizon. Is he chewing as he goes? Just to keep up with that female. He has a black full beast. It's all this happening this afternoon. So there are nine subspecies, only one species giraffe, nine subspecies. We've got the Maasai giraffe in Kenya, which is um, one I was talking about before. The reticulated giraffe. South African giraffe or southern. West African giraffe. Hmm. Beautiful scenes here in Amakala. Might be hyena. So we're checking the den sites on Taxon's Road, but it sounds like they've moved west of us, maybe more towards the dam where I think Cedric is. But we haven't heard any commotion in a while. We just figured it's worth coming to have a look in case any clan members stuck around. But we had a little thing with Tlalamba just before you came back to us and she was moving. Where just after she finished that kill, she started moving and a hyena came running straight at her. Didn't actually see her because she flattened herself. The hyena wasn't even interested in her. Came straight up and took this Taxon's Road, the road in front of us. Took it all the way down, straight towards the hyena commotion. So there's, there's trouble in paradise there somewhere. So we heard from Peter, which is the, that Wild Earth viewer crew with Tristan as well that uh, it seems like they were very unhappy with a hyena but they don't know which one sounds like there might have been a bit of an interaction where there was a bit of a fight maybe so we want to try and figure out where they've gone but i think cedric's at the dam here so i actually might just go there and say hi to cedric too it would be fun my last night we might as well go and have a look at the dam with cedric while avoiding trees in our faces. <laughs> I looked up just at the right time that was about to smack me. <laughs> oh, what a day it has been. I'm so covered in leaves. These little leaves all over me. That's <laughs> how so you know it's been a productive afternoon when there's little leaves all over you. <laughs> oh, someone's also looking for an update on the hyenas there on the radio. So it almost sounded like they were in here somewhere. The dam is just in front of us, the den now just behind us to the left. It sounded like they were moving and they were in here somewhere. I wonder if they haven't come down to the dam. Hyenas, where did you go? I wish you all could have heard that tiny little baby hyena call. I can only imagine based on the pitch of it that it was the tiny cub as in maybe Ntima's cub who is still mostly black and maybe about that tall. The tiniest little squeaky whoop you've ever heard in your life. Absolute tickets for me from there. We were sitting with Lalamba in the tree and that little thing started calling. I mean it's the first time I've heard it call. I just whoa, lost it. <laughs> it 
Andrew the video guy, you reckon the hyenas are planning a surprise peekaboo just for me? That would be a pretty perfect send-off. I actually physically, realistically cannot ask for more after Tlalamba and the little lapwing chick here. But my goodness, would I be very happy if the hyenas popped up? Well, I'm not seeing anything at the dam. I know I heard them in here, but something's telling me to check the den there. I don't know what it is, and we're losing lots. I think I'm going to check the den first. Ugh, decisions. No tracks on the road. They went through the block. No. <laughs> okay, wish me luck. I'm hoping there's going to be somebody at that den site. Maybe the clan has gone that way, and I'll send you back over to Amakala with Steve. Thanks Tess, and what a wonderful send-off indeed. Well, we've decided to just turn around and watch the sunset with a gorgeous couple of models. Hmm. It's a beautiful scene. I'm going to just allow you to soak it up and I'm not going to spoil it with any words. Just allow you to just enjoy this beautiful moment.
beautiful reflective moments. Happy Sunday, everybody. Checking in with yourself right now in this moment. Wildlife can be so good for that because they are so in the moment, not caught up in any stories. Which so many of us seem to be a lot of the time. Quiet, peaceful moments. Appreciating the beauty of nature. Celebrating the passage of the sun. You're right, Jeffrey. Doesn't get any better than this. It's time to tap into your owl-like wisdom and elephant-like memory. Gear up for a month of Animal Quiz Mania this November. Teams will pit against each other every Saturday for some good old-fashioned interactive fun on The Sunset Show. To enter, form a team of at least two people, fill out the form on our website and name your team. Come along and put yourself and your challenges to the test. Wild Earth, bringing the fun to the safari.
I've just been told I look like I'm cheeky. Thank you, Jordan. You're cheeky too. That's why we like each other. I'm giving you a disclaimer. That's what I'm doing before we zoom in on spiders. Lots of spiders. Good luck. It's going to be creepy looking. Oh, it's the most gigantic community web spiders nest. The social spiders of the bush. And there's just spiders crawling everywhere. Don't look closely. If you're arachnophobic, if you joined the AMA the other night and are now arachnophobic when you weren't before, I'm sorry. But spiders, so many spiders. I had to do it one last time and my story is complete because I glimpsed June's cub. One of the hyena cubs, I glimpsed it. For an instant, I glimpsed it before it disappeared. And now I am complete. I, I had to show you creepy crawlies before I go. You know how much I love the small things. The sheer amount of spiders that we have here is just mind-blowing. There must be a hundred spiders from top to bottom because this web stretches into two different nests and all the way down to the ground. <gasps> that is just crazy. You can see all the dots that are spiders just spread out all the way to the top right there. There's the top nest. Down to the bottom is the bottom nest just above the surface of the grass or the top of the grass. And it goes right down to the floor. One of the biggest ones I've seen in a really, really long time. We've been seeing lots of small community nests, but not very many gigantic ones. Oh. Sorry if anybody is arachnophobic, but maybe this will help you get more comfortable with that. The best way to get over a fear is to confront it. Oh, look at them moving. I think they're all busy replacing all of the catchment web. <laughs> Yolanda, you know, it's funny. We were chatting about this the other night. My skin would have crawled at this when I was younger. But now I find it absolutely fascinating. However, you also don't see me going to stand next to it or put my hand in it. One, putting my hand in it would be unethical. But two, I really don't want that. Nope. The, I know my safety limits. I know my comfort zones. I'm happy with them being at a distance. I find it absolutely fascinating, but I definitely don't want to have them on me. Large spiders, things like baboon spiders. We don't really get tarantulas here, but baboon spiders are our version. But I've handled tarantulas before. I don't mind the very big spiders, but the little ones I have a bit more of a problem with. If they're at a distance, though, I'm okay. So my skin doesn't crawl. I don't feel grossed out sitting here. I think it's quite cool to see how they work together. It makes you wonder why there aren't more species of spider that do this. But I think there's just too much competition. But I think growing up, I was quite scared of all the creepy crawlies. Insect spiders, scorpions, all of those things. Ooh. They looked like they were about to have a fight, but never mind. Oh, this one's actively spinning silk. The one just off to the right in the middle there, just in the middle of the screen now. You can see it's actively expanding, not expanding, expelling silk. Wow. I think the only way to really get over those kinds of things if your skin is crawling is, I mean, honestly, when you view them like this from a distance, it's fascinating to see how it all works. They've got little spinnerets at the back there, so we know it's actively building this what's called a catchment web. It's the part of the web that's going to catch all the moths and yummy insects and sometimes even birds and bats. They're moving at speed to extend those silk strands all the way down. You can actually see them glinting as they go. It's fascinating. They can produce seven or eight different types of silk. And they're just slowly pulling it out the back end. And making this an engineering marvel and an artwork. Those two are having a bit of an interaction. That was cool. Almost crawling over each other. <laughs> Andrew, the video guy, it's very much that. A little bit of an early Halloween in the bush. Seeing this many spiders together is honestly so cool. Yes, it's a little creepy, I'll give you that, but it's amazing. 
There is no other species of spider we have here that will do this. Just this one. Community spiders. Or social spiders. I'd love to see the change in their behavior. If something hits that catchment web, any form of insect or food, everyone's going to go wild. Ooh, linker. That's a cool one. So yes, spiders definitely can fight for mates. It happens more commonly in something like, for example, a golden orbweb spider. Those very big, beautiful black and yellow or black and orange spiders that build those enormous webs that span across trees that might be two, three, four, five meters apart. And with them, it's quite cool to see because you can actively see the difference. So you spot this giant female somewhere in the middle usually, and all around her, you might have anywhere between five and 15 different little males that are tiny, about an eighth of her size, if not actually less than that. And they compete with each other to be able to mate with her. She doesn't have to accept any of them. She can choose to accept one or none. Um, she can actually just eat all of them if she wants to but they will be competing for her. In a structure like this, I would imagine that yes, there would be some form of competition, but it's interesting, a lot of these spiders have been known to also sacrifice themselves. So as much as there might be competition, that one looks like it's gonna fall at the bottom there. <laughs> as much as there might be competition, you might also find that naturally they might move out of the way for each other because it is quite a complex social structure. But across the board, majority of spiders, the males will be competing for a female. And it's a massive risk that they take because if they don't win, chances are they're probably going to get eaten. I don't think they think about it quite the same way as we do, luckily. Otherwise, they'd constantly be in a state of existential crisis. Panicking. Can you imagine a spider panicking? That I would be afraid of. Imagine all of these spiders panicking. <laughs> would not be very pleasant. <laughs> wow. It's literally like artwork in motion. So what is quite cool is there's a bit of an optical illusion because we're seeing kind of the, the vertical plane that spans from left to right of the catchment web. But there are so many different facets or faces to it, so many different angles of the catchment web. Some are coming straight out towards us which you can see kind of just on the right hand side, those spiders panda is showing you. They're on the kind of plane that comes straight towards us. There's some that go backwards. There are some that join up at weird angles. It's just such a marvel of, of nature to catch everything and anything that might come through. They are absolutely brilliant at what they do. Fascinating. Okay, we're going to leave the creepy crawlies and let everyone take a sigh of relief as we go. And we'll send you over to Steve at Amakala to see what he's up to. Welcome back to a beautiful view. Stunning Eastern Cape. It's interesting, on this day, 1993, South Africans Nelson Mandela and F.W. de Klerk were named the recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize for their work for the peaceful termination of the apartheid regime and for laying the foundations of the new democratic South Africa. 30 years ago, Once again, allow you to soak in this majesty, the color palette of the African sunset. Always bringing yourself to the present moment through your breath. Four breaths in, eight breaths out. feeling overwhelmed or charged for whatever reason it's a beautiful way to access the present moment and when you're concentrating on your breath the mind 
become still and the charge seems to disappear and regulates sufficient oxygen in the blood that's where we find ourselves when we're charged is in shallow breathing and deoxygenated blood and a bit of a stress that takes place we have the ability to calm that if you can do that 15 times every time you feel something three times a day if it ever comes up do it but if you can do it three times a day it really will connect you with the moment with yourself bring you back into the body into the heart space out of the ever thinking stories in the mind I'm sure everybody's very happy that I left the creepy crawlies behind. <laughs> Panda said he's gonna feel them like they're in his bed tonight. Sorry, Panda. <laughs> but anyway, we're on to looking for all of the other nocturnals. No update on the hyenas. They seem to have disappeared into thin air. They teleported somewhere, as they do, you know? <laughs> Every now and then. We just cannot figure out where animals have disappeared to. Tonight is one of those nights. But I'm happy I got I'm happy. I'm happy I got to see June's cub. That's the one that's, that's kind of yay big and fluffy. Spot pattern emerging beautifully. Stunning. Made my day. As if everything else wasn't already enough. Now it's time for all the other nocturnals, chameleons, owls, pangolins, you know, honey badgers, all of the good things.
Janet's. Ooh, Janet's. I'd like to see Janet's. At this point, I'm just soaking it all in, really. Whatever comes, comes. <laughs> Right, well, I can't really say that we haven't had the luck today because we've had it all. I, I have no words actually for how much we have seen this afternoon. But there is one thing that I really, really, really still want and I'm hoping that you're all going to get involved because I, I kind of need you to get involved for this to work. I would love to do one more Fast Five. So if you don't know what a fast five is, it is your chance to ask me anything you want. It doesn't have to be nature or wildlife related. It can be anything. Toppings on pizza down to books and whatever else you'd like. Please send in some questions for me for fast five. I'd really appreciate it. Have one more solid giggle with everybody. Because <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be interesting ones. There always are. <laughs> One of my favorite, favorite things about the show is that very specific interaction with all of you. My favorite. I need y'all to get involved. Okay. We're kind of done a loop now. This is back to where Tlalumba had the kill, was just up there where we heard the hyena interaction. So, we'll see what happens. Maybe there might be a hyena around sniffing at where she had the kill. Now Jordan is getting herself ready. The lovely voice in my ear and one of the best humans on the planet. She's getting herself ready for all your questions coming in and as soon as they come in she will start asking them. She'll start firing away. For now I get to be nervous about the caliber of questions that are about to be asked. <laughs> so thick so quickly we haven't even had proper substantial rain in the last month and yet somehow in the last three days it's become 50 shades greener and a hundred times thicker in the bush visibility has dropped drastically <laughs> it's gonna be a very full summer I think This is kind of where we had Tlalumba moving off. So I'm going to have a very quick look around here for some hyenas. Wish me luck, fingers crossed. And while we wait for those questions to get put in order by Jordan, I'm going to send you over to Cedric to see what he's got. Okay, okay. All right, so we are on the northwestern corner of Juma, and um, just looking around here, yeah, it is nice and dark now, looking for any of the little night animals. I've been lucky with, uh, with uh, Janet here once or twice, as well as a bush baby. So I'm keeping my eyes peeled and doing it very slowly. But yes, of course, as you know, it is uh, Tessa's last uh, drive, and uh, Tessa, was from from myself um, well all the best for your new adventure and uh, it was wonderful wonderful working with you you know it's great fun so much fun and uh, yeah I'm sure we will keep in touch and uh, yeah I'm sure you had fantastic sightings here I've had some amazing sightings here with you so uh, so it is sad that you are going, but I'm sure you are going to be happy at your new place, your new endeavors. Let's go up the Buffalo Cut Line. Be bush babies galore all over the show.
Galoga, Galaga, Galaga, Galoga, Galoga, Galaga, Galaga. All right. It's Trying my best. I'm just a bit worried about Baobab Dam. Our signal's always bad, yeah. So I'm hoping it's we can go actually stationary. We've got some to the left and to the right of us. I am. I don't have a monitor. I'm looking directly into the night and. I don't even know what's in front of me. But, yeah, okay, and pile up yeah, all of them. Yeah, okay, all right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Sam. So we are looking at Impala and Tree. <laughs> the bush baby search feels like it never ends. <laughs> We're always looking for bush babies and they're just so elusive. Cedric, if you find a bush baby tonight, I'm going to be so happy. I can't remember the last time I saw one here at Juma. A long time ago. On the far eastern side. <laughs> right. We're doing a little bit of a loop again. Just to see what we can find. Going back towards the dam. Oh, Jordan's got my fast five questions. Thank you in advance for everyone that sent questions in. She said they come flooding in. And she had a hard time trying to put them all together and choose them. Oh, I'm excited and scared. <laughs> Mostly excited. All right, Jordan, fire away. I'm ready. Let's do this. That almost looked like a snake. <laughs> it's just a branch in the road. It just looked like a puff adder. Oh, it's a solid one to start with. Levin, thank you for your question. What and who am I going to miss most? Um, I'm probably going to miss all of you a lot and the people here, the, the, the crew that have become family. Um, but I think I'll also miss the hyenas an awful lot. In all honesty, I'm going to miss the clan in terms of animals. Just the dynamics are incredible. In terms of people, I'm sure you all know my bestie is Panda. He's behind the camera. But also my MC girls, absolutely brilliant. Jordan in my ear, Nadine, Gwyn, Tadiwa, Morgan and Mel when they were there. And a special mention to Jarrett as well. Um, and Morgan the cam op, my other best friend. So them, more than anyone. <laughs> more than anyone and uh, all of you who have been so helpful. Thank you for all the help through the years. It's been incredible too many people to name <laughs> that's a solid one to start with Whoa. Jordan you're on fire there on fire <laughs> Kelly solid question love this one yes we are having a little go away party just for the exclusive camp because last night uh, my my friends that are guides from the other lodges um, had us over there as well so that we could say goodbye to all of them or so I could say goodbye to all of them so that was thanks to very largely um, Dion and Tristan who were at Nkoro and then uh, Dion from uh, sorry Peter and Tristan at Nkoro and Dion from Chitwa they organized that for me and tonight it's the rugby South Africa's playing so the Juma crew are all getting together for the rugby and then I'll be an afterthought because the rugby is in all honesty more important. <laughs> you know what we're like everybody, you know what we're like. <laughs> so we'll all be watching the rugby together for sure and we'll be having a good time and that's the perfect send off in my opinion. Spending time with the Juma family. I wish actually, I wish Max was here as well, other person that I'm going to miss a lot. <laughs> Michelle S, I love this one. Um, things that I'm really looking forward to, a brand new challenge in stuff that I, 
I, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> Brand new stuff and in a lot of ways, you know, moving to a whole different environment. I think that's going to be a really fun challenge career-wise, but I think what I'm looking forward to most is is life. Josh, that's what I'm most looking forward to. Moving moving in with someone is a big deal. <laughs> moving forward in a relationship is, and I think that for me is it's exactly where we want to be right now. So the combination of both is just perfect. A new challenge with my best friend. That's the best way to summarize it. <laughs> oh. Judy, my best memory of Juma to take with me. My goodness. There are so many to try and choose from. I don't know where to start on that one. That's a really, really tough question, but I think I'm going to have to summarize it as maybe between the moments with Klalamba and her cubs, the leopardess we saw earlier with her cubs, and all of the moments with the Juma clan, learning little cubs' personalities. I mean, that for me, I fell in love with hyenas in a way that I didn't know I could when I came here. I thought I knew them, I didn't. I didn't know hyenas in my previous life until I came here. And I fell in love with them in a way that I never expected. <laughs> and funny enough, it's what brought Josh and I together as well, which is a beautiful little perfect circle. Um, but I think I'm going to miss the clan a lot. And they have been one of the best adventures for me at Juma. A specific sighting, I honestly, <laughs> I don't know if I can put my finger on one. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> There's too many. But today was pretty darn close to the best day ever. I'm gonna say it like that. It's like everything just fell into place. Oh, last question. <laughs> Val from the UK. So the lovely Jordan that's in my ear, her and I are constantly talking about a little sneaky cocktail together. That's our favorite thing to do together. Um, drink of choice tonight. I mean, my all time favorite is, uh, is jammy. A little whiskey for the soul. <laughs> I call it jammy. <laughs> a good proper beverage. There's a, there's a little route there, be careful. Don't drive over that. <laughs> it might bounce the car. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you very much for those questions. That was absolutely brilliant. What an evening it has been, and it's all thanks to all of you as well. This Spooktober is all about scales. In honor of Reptile Awareness Day, Wild Earth is hosting a fireside chat with James Henry and reptile expert Chris Cook. You are at risk of being bitten by them. Come along as we talk all things reptiles and learn more about the scaly soldiers of the safari. Don't miss out. Watch it live on your nearest device. Wild Earth, it's in your nature.
Right, so doing the last little bit of a check behind the camp area, just in case uh, that young male leopard, old Marips, has decided to move around the side. I mean, he could be as well quite far from here. I'm just taking a, a huge chance, thinking maybe that he's still hanging around here. So I'm going to give a, a last little loop around and then, yeah. Hopefully, if not now, maybe tomorrow morning. I don't know where Tess left. Uh, so I didn't really hear exactly the area where she went. All in all, that she went into some thick, thick stuff. But I think she was coming north. What a cute little note to the end of my day. A family of three scrub hares. Unfortunately for them, this is exactly where Tlalamba had a kill earlier, and I think they might be looking for a lost friend. I think it might have been a leveret, it might have been a baby one. Shame. It was definitely whiter and fluffier than a squirrel, so the only thing I can think of is a scrub hare that she got earlier. But at least these three still have each other and they've got the zoomies, they've been chasing each other around. <laughs> there they're coming back again. <laughs> it's one of those overly energetic evenings because it's been a lovely cool day, it's nice and cool now. They're in an open area so they're feeling safe, maybe they shouldn't be. But to me it's, it's very cute, I have a massive soft spot for scrub hairs. getting some food in, in between all of the playtime. So last night on the way back home, we saw the tiniest baby leveret in the road just outside camp. Ooh, Michelle S, yes, you're absolutely right. Adding on to that conversation from earlier, thank you. Uh, the vegetation is becoming very lush and very dense very quickly. We are struggling to see through it with the spotlight which means we're struggling to spot animals at night it's a really challenge though and um it's certainly favoring the predators that's for sure you can see how their ears are moving around i think they've got predators on the brain oh grooming time going for the tops of the grasses and there's little chafer beetles flying all around them those are the same beetles that drive us crazy <laughs> I'm sure you can hear them buzzing in the car and smacking into us I can hear something lapping or chewing can you hear that panda sounds like it's down here in the dip. I feel like we need to go and investigate that, sorry. <laughs> That's got my attention because I'm thinking hyena lion or leopard, that kind of lapping sound down here. There's a tiny little puddle of water down here and that's where it sounds like it's coming from. A little last minute something. Are we gonna get another spoiler? Is that a little? I could definitely hear a lapping or a chewing sound. It 
There's a little water system down here. No, that's mostly dried up. So where could I hear that from then? Oh, that was a teaser. That was terrible. Now my brain is ticking into overtime. Where are you? Where are you? Come out. Didn't sound that far away. I'm going to take a slow drive up here because it is possible that something was drinking and moved as well. I don't see any tracks. <laughs> Jasmine, I love it. I love the drama llama coming out there. Ooh, drama. So much. <laughs> I love the drama llama. <laughs> what am I going to do without all the drama llamas now? <laughs> Who is going to help me channel my inner drama llama? <laughs> I have the cutest drama llama water bottle, by the way. And I'm actually leaving that one here for Max because he loves it. What are you? Where did you go? Maybe it was something hidden in the thickets? I mean, based on the fact that we haven't found it, I'm going to go with that's the most logical answer. Probably makes sense. Okay. Oh, you can do it, Rusty! Come on, boy. <laughs> okay, we're going to go up and check the clearing up on the top and maybe something will have popped up there. Creepers to the crawlies, we're scouting the creatures that keep you up at night. Hang on to your seats as we debunk the myths behind the safari scariest. Turn out the light and lock your door. There's a spooky safari coming to your home. Come along for some hair-raising fun this Halloween with Wild Earth. I can't wait for these impalas to drop their babies. That's also very soon. Give and take another maybe 
two weeks, three weeks, yeah, about three weeks time. Give and take three weeks. As I'm just saying, I'm not exact, but just close to that. It was so nice having all the little baby impalas running around here again. Especially this herd here on uh, this open clearing just south of our camp. It's so, so big. It's such a big harem. And um, I can imagine all, most of these females having little lambs. I always think it's such a, such a special time of the year. Look at the little nurseries and all the youngsters all together in a nursery. But of course that, that is going to come very soon. We couldn't figure out what was causing that noise. I think it was something in the thickets in the dip. Maybe down in the riverbed there might be some other puddles. Oh, I've got a beetle on my neck. Thank you. You can go away, beetle. That felt very odd. <laughs> and so we've come up to the clearing and we've got zebras. How beautiful. Zebras behind the impalas. Everyone's looking nice and calm. Finally, it's not windy at all for a change at night. I think everyone's just taking advantage of that. What a beautiful way to end the day. All we need is a little scrub here to come hopping through the front. <laughs> but I got those three earlier, so I'm happy with that. Christy, thank you very much. I'm so happy that you've you've learned a lot. And uh, thank you for the well wishes. I know we're going to be great at it and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But thank you to everyone who sent all of the well wishes and all of the thank yous. I really do appreciate it. I don't think you will realize how important you are to this this whole crew, to everybody. You know, to have the, the privilege of taking you along for the wild ride and memories to kind of share the passion, the growth, the very high highs and the very low lows. It's a very important thing. And there's a lot of growth and learning that goes into it, a lot of appreciation for all of you, but particularly, you know, for me, people like Shreyas, Michael Fleetwood, Baby Hyena, Michelle Stem, Kimberly Lopez, people that have gotten me through some sticky situations and helped me grow and learn so much. So thank you very, very much for all of that. I'm very, very sad to be leaving, but I'm also incredibly excited to start a new adventure. And I promise I'm not leaving you all behind. I will be back to visit whenever I can. Um, but I'm just really looking forward to, to the next chapter. But thank you, everybody, for all of the love and support, especially, you know, friends, family, the people that have become family that were friends. <laughs> the whole Wild Earth crew said for coming full circle with me. He came in at the beginning when I was here and here we are today for looking after me. And Tristan was actually the person who taught me Juma in the beginning. So it's all come a very long way. But what an honor and privilege to share this part of my life and these years with all of you. I'm so grateful for every single part of the experience. It has honestly changed my life. And I know that no matter where I go, I've got an incredibly strong family behind me thanks to all of you. So. Thank you very, very much for the privilege and the honor of sharing all of this with all of you. It's going to be very hard to say goodbye tomorrow. <laughs> and now, actually. <laughs> but I've held it together pretty well, I reckon. Much better than I thought I would this afternoon. Oh, Panda, thank you for sharing this last drive with me. I really appreciate it, Bestie. You're amazing and everybody else. Thank you so much for joining me for the last afternoon It's been spectacular. I hope you've enjoyed our sunset safari and Jordan is saying in my ear Thank you very much. He thinks I'm one of the the most incredible people. So thank you Jordan I think exactly the same thing of you. You are an absolutely brilliant person. Thank you for supporting me as well But thanks to everyone. It's just been it's been a wild ride 
filled with memories, filled with everything and anything I could have ever hoped for. Thank you for sharing the vulnerability with me, everybody. It's been truly spectacular. Now the rest of the crew, without me, <laughs> will be out and about tomorrow morning for the sunrise safari at 5.30 a.m. Central African time. I will be watching, I can promise you that, because I'll already have FOMO. But please enjoy it. Enjoy every second, soak it all in, and I hope that I will be seeing you all very, very soon. But I'll keep in touch. <laughs> And I promise you we're going to make the most of the new adventure. Thank you for the privilege of the last few years. Have a wonderful evening and the crew will see you in the morning. Goodbye, everybody. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised.